if it needs a part two the part two will start here so hi welcome back to my channel if this is a part two of my fitness journey q a because i rambled on for so long that i needed a part two <laughs> so the next question is how do you avoid takeaways all the time and stay eating relatively well i don't know how to answer this question <laughs> um i guess it depends what all the time means like takeaway wise because during lockdown i'm living at home and we have i think had at least one takeaway a week just to like keep the morale up and i feel like it is so important and everything is all about balance and i feel like as long as you're not having takeaway every single day for every single meal like it's not as big as an issue as the fitness industry wants you to believe. In terms of stay eating relatively well, I think again it is just all about balance and I wouldn't say that every single one of my meals every day is clean like I have. I guess I just feel like I just eat normally. I don't think I'm massively strict on my eating. I've been like in and out of calorie counting um, throughout my fitness journey. I've definitely had times where I've been stricter than others and that kind of just depends on my goal at the time but sort of at the moment I kind of just eat what my body wants and what my body is craving or I don't know really. Sometimes I crave a Wagamama's, sometimes I don't and if I'm not craving one I'm not going to order one but if I am craving one then I probably will order one unless I want to save like a little bit of money rather than having takeaway all the time then I actually have the Wagamama's cookbook so sometimes I just like cook that sort of stuff myself as well. Um, I think something that massively helps me with this is the fact that I still live at home because I know that for dinner every night, whoever's cooking in the evening, there will always be like a solid dinner, like a nutritious dinner every single day. And I'm really lucky that I have that. And then I guess just like breakfast, lunch and snacks is up to me and I just kind of eat what I want when I want. I don't like try to, I don't tend to overthink it too much. Sometimes I want to snack on a smoothie or like a banana or some fruit um, or like rice cakes or whatever. And sometimes I just want some crisps and you know, I think that's fine. I think it can, you can massively overthink it. And I, I feel like I'm just the type of person that unless you know you're like a bodybuilder or a bikini model or you have like really what's the word extreme fitness goals or you're like a professional athlete then I think over complicating nutrition can be quite like detrimental to your mental health and also your relationship with food but again it's each to their own it de completely depends on the individual and their goals and sort of where you are in your fitness journey and everybody is different and I definitely go through phases of being stricter and less strict and I guess it's just about having balance and I'm lucky enough that I actually enjoy cooking so with the whole like takeaways thing I completely understand that some days you're just like I really can't be bothered to cook and you'll have a wagamama's or uh, have a takeaway honestly I've got wagamama's on my mind <laughs> or you know you'll go to your friends when we can and like have a takeaway together and I feel like that's completely normal it's part of your social health I think yeah going out for dinner like it's as long as you don't overdo it I think you know there's no point stressing yourself over but again with everything there is balance and if you are trying to be in a calorie deficit but you're having like six takeaways a week then I guess that is something you could address just because of because it's much easier to track what you're eating when you've made it because you know exactly what's going in and how much of what everything is going in that is if you track calories and if not I guess it's just if you're cooking for yourself you can be more mindful about what you're putting into your body and just be more aware I guess I absolutely love this question it is if you could collaborate with anyone in brackets gym wear skincare etc who would it be and I feel like it has always been like a dream of mine to collaborate with Gymshark and I feel like a lot of people who have fitness accounts on Instagram can relate I feel like it is just like the brand that everybody would like to work with um but I also would absolutely love the opportunity to work with Tala as well we are Tala that's Grace 
Beverly's company. I just feel like either of those companies I would absolutely love to have a sustainable collection with either of them. I just think it would literally be a dream come true to have a sustainable gym wear collection with Tala or Gymshark. It would just be amazing. <laughs> yeah, those are definitely like gym wear wise the companies I would absolutely love to work with. And then in terms of supplements, I would definitely love to work with My Protein. They're kind of the only supplement brand I have ever used and I've got a lot of their gym wear as well and I absolutely love it. So as a like as a brand as a whole, I absolutely love My Protein and to be able to work with them as well would just be incredible. Uh skincare, I guess. My most used skincare products are Garnier, The Ordinary and Ren skincare and I feel like any of those would be an absolute dream. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that sums up my answers to that question but oh my gosh, a sustainable collection with Gymshark or Tala would just, like, I would die. <laughs> that would just be, like, I've got a list of goals for, like, Instagram and YouTube and things like that. I have like a little notebook that's got all my lifetime goals for those sort of things and that is like my top goal for Instagram is to work with either of those companies and have like a little collab and have my own sustainable collection. Can't believe I just admitted that online. <laughs> oh well. Uh, this next question is who has inspired you? And then it says other Instas, family and friends. So. I feel like my two main inspirations in my life have been my sister and my mum just because they're such hard working women and obviously everyone in my family motivates me and they're all such dedicated and hard working people but just my sister and my mum are so so work driven they just have a great work ethic I feel like they're amazing role models and yeah I have great women in my life to look up to. I would also say my granny as well, my mum's mum, but she has recently passed away and yeah, we don't have her anymore but she's still a huge inspiration of mine. Um, again, just an absolute work-driven, goal-driven person that just has worked so hard to get to where she is and they are and I feel like it's a great trait to have and yeah, I massively look up to them. In terms of Instagram, like other Instas, I would say, should I try and have a top five? But in no particular order, but my top five would probably be Megan Grubb, Morgan Rose Moroni, Grace Beverly, Busy B. Karis, or Karis Gray, Karis Whitaker actually, <laughs> and Lottie's Lifestyle. I just feel like they are such hard working women. They are amazing role models and they're just like friendly and caring and very down to earth women but also work really hard for what they want and I just feel like they all have very admirable traits and traits that I would like to have and like to say that I have or yeah just sort of like motivated, dedicated and definitely inspire me and inspired me actually to start my own fitness account for sure. This question is how do you fuel your body and I feel like I kind of touched on that earlier but just to like quickly recap kind of just whatever my body wants and whatever my body is craving I feel like I massively listen to my body which is a motto from Sarah's Day which is if I had to have a sixth insta inspiration it would probably be Sarah's Day I've followed her journey for a very long time as well but I think listening to your body is so important and you know if you have a certain meal planned and that fits into your calories or it fits into your macros or you think that that is what you should be eating for dinner but you don't want it and your body is craving something else I just don't think it's the be all and end all if you have what your body is craving and I feel like that is a massive lesson that a lot of people learn on their fitness journey and it's a really important one I would say. So I just kind of fuel my body with whatever I want and whatever I'm craving. I'm not too like restrictive with the foods that I eat as I said earlier so it just varies from day to day I guess which is why I think I like filming what I eat in a day is because they're always so different and I just don't really have set meals that I eat at all. I just kind of just eat whatever <laughs> that I'm craving, which is usually 
a Linda McCartney sausage sandwich for breakfast, but all the other meals tend to change. <laughs> so I feel like the next three questions that I've got here are quite similar, so I'll probably just read them all out and then answer them as one. What's your motivator? How do you motivate yourself when you just CBA? And is there, should there be an end goal? In terms of is there, should there be an end goal, I feel like that can also just depend on the person. If you really like exercise, then I would guess like no, and you would just kind of do it anyway. But then if you are the type of person that works with short-term goals or medium goals or even long-term goals, because everybody works differently, I feel like having an end goal helps with the motivation side and like creating the habit because if you're just kind of doing it to do it, and you're not really sure why, then I feel like you're much more likely to stop doing it than if you have your why, why you're doing it, and your end goal, and you've broken it down into short-term or long-term or medium-term goals, then it sort of structures it nicely for you. Uh, you can reach your short-term goals, keep motivation high because you're reaching them and eventually then you'll get closer and closer to your long-term goal and form habits and yeah just keep the motivation high. Goals definitely help with motivation especially on the days where you CBA. So for me I guess I would say it is so important to learn the difference between can't be bothered and needing to rest. It, there's, it's just a fine line. Some days you can't be bothered and then once you do the workout you feel better and you know you're glad you did it, you've got those endorphins and you're like I'm really glad that I moved my body today. Sometimes you get, you're like okay I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna jump into doing exercise anyway. Um, and then you get halfway through the workout or not even halfway through the workout and you're like actually I'm really not feeling this today and you just like call it quits there and that is also completely fine. If your body isn't up for the session then you probably do need to rest and then other times you don't even get as far as starting the workout and as I feel like as long as you're not just putting it off constantly and there is a reason whether it's your mental health, your physical health, like you need to rest. If it is any of those factors then 100% like just you know, listen to your body, take the rest and don't smash out a workout if you think your body needs to rest and recover or if you just need like the mental space. But if it is becoming a habit for you to just like ignore the workout that you want to be doing that day and just like keep pushing it back and back and back and further away and you're just not getting the workouts done, then yeah, in that case I would say it probably would be helpful for you to have short term goals or readdress your why because if you're if you don't have a why to your exercise and you keep pushing workouts back then you're never going to get to a point that you want to do that workout because you don't really have a reason why you want to be doing that workout so yeah in terms of me it, it is just so different some days I can't be bothered to go to the gym but I just like drag myself there anyway and get there start with some light stretching and then I'm like yeah that will do me for today. Some days I do that and I'm like okay I'm ready now to like completely smash out a workout and some days I don't even like go to the gym and I think that is normal and I feel like it is so important to listen to your body because if your body needs rest then the worst thing you can do to it is push it through an absolutely brutal session because you'll just overload your body and yeah listening again listen to your body just listen to your body taking a rest day i think a lot of people think if they take too many rest days they're gonna lose progress and yes in an extreme sense that is the case but if your body needs to rest your body needs to rest and recover and if your body isn't getting enough rest then you're not gonna see progress so yeah i think that is really important in terms of my motivator at the start it was obviously as I said before to lose weight and not for the right reasons and then when I fully got into the gym it was again just to like smash through PBs, um, sort of hit squat PBs, deadlift PBs and just generally be fitter and feel better and you know get a quicker running time like 5k PBs 
I just feel like I like to set myself little goals along the way that I can aim for to keep motivation high or just to like keep me going for when motivation isn't high because I'm like oh I'm really close to that 5k goal but I really can't be bothered to go for a run now and even if I go for the run and it's slower than my normal run I feel like in my head I'm like but I still took a step to work that little bit more to get closer to my goal and I just feel like whether it's the best session ever or the worst session ever, you know in your head you still did something to work towards your goal. And that's a great feeling. So yeah, I have no idea if that answered any of those questions, but that is just kind of like my view on that. And then whilst we're on the topic of recovery, this question is what is your recovery method? And again, I feel like this is different for everyone and it's also different for me. Some days I'll just take a complete rest day and I will like barely move. Some days it will be like a nice relaxing bath or just like a self-care day. I can do some yoga, go for a walk. It just varies really and I think stretching and yoga are my favourite recovery method methods and I feel like I gain the most out of those methods and if I was the type of person that liked foam rolling I would definitely foam roll but it is just something that I don't enjoy doing and I wish I did and I wish I did it more but I just don't. Maybe at some point in my life I will foam roll as well because I feel like that could really help me but yoga, stretching and like sports massages are definitely my favourite forms of recovery as well as like baths and just relaxation, like fully just letting my body relax and recover. And also refueling as well. And I've noticed that a lot of people eat less on their rest days, but I would just like eat my normal amount on a rest day because even though you're doing less exercise, your body still needs the fuel to re repair and recover. So yeah, I would never drop my calories on a rest day just because I want to like keep fueling my body and like aiding the repair and recovery of my muscles. This question is what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? That is a good question and I feel like not that many people will know watching this video but actually my degree was interior design like I'm quite a creative person so my spare time I, I can definitely, I like, I just love tidying my room because doing interior design I just love seeing spaces put together and when my room is put together it's just like so calming to me. Uh, also just sort of creative stuff like I like trialling hairstyles. I'm rubbish at makeup but I enjoy like trying new things because I just find it fascinating and like I just like being creative. And then other things I would say that I like to do in my spare time is stuff like I'm doing some macrame at the moment because I got a little kit for my birthday. Uh, baking, I absolutely love baking except for banana bread. If you, especially banana bread, if you follow me on Instagram, you will 100% know how obsessed I am with baking and banana bread. And also just like skincare and self care in general, I love a pamper day and like planning out my weeks and stuff and planning out content I just love to be organized and I also in my spare time actually love writing training plans like I write them for myself because I'm not qualified yet but that is something that could be potentially coming in the future hopefully soon um but yeah I absolutely love writing workouts and just like plans for myself <clears throat> what else do I like doing I guess just sort of like being creative and using my time in ways that like I enjoy. Like I like to paint, I don't really like to draw, I can't really draw. I can't really paint but I enjoy painting so I do that and yeah I guess. I guess I would just bring out my creative side at my spare time I think if I'm not like in work or if I'm not in the gym, like that sort of spare time I guess I would just be doing something creative. And then the last question, we made it, I literally feel like I've been talking for hours. <laughs> uh, the last question is, what is your favourite type of workout from when you started and now? And I feel like this is really interesting, so I'm just going to do this based off when I joined the gym. Because uh, when I joined the gym I massively 
enjoyed hit circuits and leg day. I feel like those were my favourite workouts. I absolutely loved doing them. I'd go to sort of like circuit classes and I loved that. And I've continued to do circuit classes like throughout my whole gym journey, but obviously we can't go to the gym now. As well as leg day as well. I just feel like I could really push myself on a leg day. And then like in the middle of my fitness journey, I would say it changed to like upper body days and leg days. Like I just loved the strength aspect of training. So that was like a massive focus of mine. And then at the moment, I guess I would just say, because obviously we're doing home workouts, I would say running and like full body stuff. I feel like if I I'm too specific with a body part at home. I kind of just get bored and I feel like I'm really limited and I don't really get much out of it. So yeah, that is what I would say I do at home. So I'm gonna round this video up here because I feel like I have been talking for a very long time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new about me or you just found it interesting to listen to my fitness journey. I feel like I've never really done a video like this before but it was really fun to do and really interesting so I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of my content then make sure you subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you want another video like this and obviously make sure to follow my Instagram if you want one of your questions to be featured in my next video like this and I will speak to you soon. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!